Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to be closing out Drum Cam Week with a fan favorite, I would say. Uh, definitely a lot of people really enjoy this drummer, really enjoy the bands that he's played for, and think that I should be checking out what he does with drumming and how he works within his craft. And that person is Bayard Kolstad. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, the two A's are kind of throwing me off, but I think I'm kind of close there. Uh, we got requests coming in from Andrew Perrine, Thomas Schumann, Taylor Acott, AK47, and Christopher Poor. Uh, all of them specifically saying I need to check out the drum cam for Rewind. So that's what we're going to do today. We've listened to Leprous before, and I enjoy them as a band. Uh, both the tracks we've checked out, I've I've been pretty fond of, but I can't say that I've necessarily tuned into the drums before. So, you know, let's let's see what's going on there. Love the, the change up of the accents there. A little bit of clever camera work there to fill in that that time of silence for the drummer anyways. Real steady, laying that down. All these like offbeat accents are just really difficult to keep track of and I kind of envy his ability to do that. I know it comes with practice but still. Another guy who makes it sound easy, I think a lot of that's because of the ghost notes or just the lighter strikes, maybe they're not real ghost notes. But it doesn't sound as complex as it visually is. Dude, the dynamic difference between his soft hits and his accents is ridiculous.
This guy's legs. And they're so small. Like, whenever I think of like dude just laying down these double base kicks, it's just like ham legs. interesting about the camera though dang that jaw dropping just as much as you know, pretty much everybody else that we've checked out this week. Um, but I feel maybe... Okay, so yesterday with Garska, I mean, just blown away. Much more than uh, the other drummers we've seen this week. And I think this kind of sits in that same little area of me just being overwhelmed by what, I, what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing. Um, but in like a completely different way. Like Garska was all about... Um, you know, the way that he perceives and can change and bend time. And this guy is just all about a wall of sound. And I think that's just really impressive. Like, he creates so much noise. I don't want to say noise. Like, noise has this negative connotation to it. But he creates a lot of noise, a lot of sound with four limbs. And a lot of that is just due to his speed. Now, I know that it's probably just this song. He probably has a wider uh, array of skills, I'd say. Um, but this song specifically kind of stuck with his speed and precision to bounce between many different uh, instruments on his kit. Um, and to get these really fast runs across the entire kit while still maintaining a... You know, this very heavy, rhythmic, you know, accent pattern. And this pattern changes all the time. Like, it's not a simple four-bar pattern. Uh, I feel like there's four four-bar patterns. Like, it's a full 16-bar pattern right here of varying accent situations. Uh, so, he, like, he's got to keep all that in his mind, execute it all, while snapping back and forth between drums and the speed that he's moving to another drum, it's amazing that he can he can put so much force into the movement to get over there and then still get a little ghost note out of it and not have all of that force be transferred into the drum head and create, you know, an accent basically. You know, a hard strike. Like he he gets all this force over there and then it just stops, retains it. And just a little tap, you know, before maybe it's like an axe. I mean, a ghost into an axe, and he get that, tka, tka, and he just like pulls over there and gets that double, double hit, and comes back. Like, um, it's just wild. Like his, <laughs> we could break down a lot of the physics going on here, but I think that's what fascinates me most is his retention and exertion of force, and the way that he controls his force his output against his kit uh, so effortlessly. He, I mean, he makes it look simple, but at the same time, I want to say that I also really appreciate how this is a very human uh, drum cam, a very human playthrough of this track. Um, I don't know if he... <laughs> he has destroyed symbols. I don't know if he did that intentionally. Maybe he wanted a specific sound. Um, the one on his right hand side, uh, had this like a uh, W wave pattern seemed kind of intentional, but the one on his left side over by the hi-hat, the one that he shoved out of the way halfway through the song, um, the cut in it is not, it doesn't look intentional. And there's also a, like an extra line going away from it. That's cut through the symbol where it's not a clean cut and it's more of like a break, um, at least it looked like to me, uh, the camera was moving quite quick while I was trying to take all this in, but, 
Uh, it, it That looked a lot less intended. So he has a kit that, to me, shows visual use. Like, this is a kit that he loves. He's not upgrading it. This is his instrument. This is his baby. He's put his work into it, and it has survived with him through his career or whatever. Uh, you know, so I see a lot of personality in his drum kit. But on the flip side, not on the flip side, additionally, with that... I really love how he chose to keep the edit or the cut with him, you know, losing the stick. All right, we have all been there, uh, whether it's, you know, drumming and losing a stick or, uh, you know, hitting the wrong thing and the stick kind of like gets messed up in your hand. You got to recenter that or you play the wrong instrument. I mean, you play the wrong note on an instrument or, you know, just whatever human flubs. All right, that happens to every musician. It doesn't matter how many hours you put into it. It doesn't matter how much of a virtuoso you are. You're going to have a flub. You're going to flub during live performances. It doesn't matter how much you practice. You cannot get all of your flubs out. All right, you're going to have a live performance in front of people where you are going to mess up. Now, the key, as with anything, this goes for acting, for music, for dance any sort of live performance is to make it not seem like a mistake. Uh, I've seen, I've seen, uh, you know, DCI shows or just marching shows in general. I've seen dances. I've seen, uh, you know, theater performances where I know what's supposed to be going on. Maybe I'm friends with some people and, and they've practiced in front of me or I've went and, and saw, you know, rehearsals or whatever. I know it's supposed to happen and I see the flub, but they brush it off like it's nothing, like it was intended. And that's what you got to do. Now, unfortunately for Bayard, you can't, you can't make it seem like it was intentional to drop your stick. But the second important part of flubbing and getting through it is to get through it he doesn't let it bring him down he trades sticks he keeps going with his right hand with what he's doing he grabs another one and moves right back into it it happens in what under a second and he's already back into the flow uh you know that's the other way to handle a flub you either own it and make it look intentional or you just say yep that happened and you move on and like I said, flubs are going to happen. you got to pick one of those two. If you choose to get frustrated, if you kind of like throw your hands up, if you'd be like, ah, God, or, you know, do better, Brian, or something like that. You know, if you show the audience that you, you screwed up and, you know, you're kind of, you've pulled yourself out, that's, that's the worst way to handle it because then it reflects into the audience too. And that's what they're going to remember. You know, that'll be the sour taste in their mouth. Um, so yeah, I like that it shows that he's human. I like that his kit feels used. It feels like his. It doesn't feel like he's you know constantly upgrading it, keeping one in pristine uh, condition, especially since it's something you hit. All right, you're, you're beating on these drums. Aside from swapping out broken heads and completely trash cymbals that just sound bad, you, <laughs> drums should show wear, right? <laughs> uh, you know... Uh, I just when I see a snare that's perfectly clean it's just like yeah you put that on for the show and you know I can respect that especially if you're putting on you know a good show or, or maybe like your premiere show or your headlining or something and you want that perfect clean sound but I mean also you know sometimes your instruments need personality but anyways yeah I, I really like how there's that human side to this video uh not just in his kit, but also in his performance. He had that flub. He just picked up and kept trucking. Um, and me, not having heard the song before, I don't know what was messed up there. I don't know what got left out by switching to, you know, one-handed playing for a second. Uh, you know, there was, there was about a bar or two that was missing some notes, but it still sounded good. I think that's the important part. Like, he knew what needed to be played to keep that piece going. And he switched over, stayed on the snare, just hitting those eighth notes, and then pulled the uh, you know the other stick out, and then ran back into a sixteenth run or whatever. You know, so he knew what was core to keep it going, uh, and that just comes from experience. So I don't, I I really love this video because of that. I do. 
Uh, and you know, just his, his little mannerisms, like shoving the symbol out of the way. I don't know if it was falling towards him. I don't know if that was, uh, you know, a hardware issue with the stand. Maybe it was a, a little, um, off balance and it fell over or, if that's where he positioned it for that section, but then he didn't need it for the rest of the song, at least not so dominantly, so he pushed it out of the way. I don't know, but just that little bit of character. Like, there's just so much character bleeding out of this dude. I love it. Um, but yeah, I think those are the two things that really stand out to me here is the humanness of the performance and just kind of seeing his personality bleed through into the entire uh, you know, playthrough and then also his handling of force and the way that he can uh exert it and withhold it and i mean just like i said that dude can just i don't know a blink of an eye and he's already hit two drums and one of them was a ghost note <laughs> and like the speed required to get there and then he just withholds all that force to get that little tap out um and then yeah like i was talking about with uh danny Danny Carey is just making it sound a lot easier than it is. If I had just heard this, I probably would not have heard a lot of those ghost notes in those 16th or 32nd note runs that he does constantly. Um, and I would have really thought it would just been a lot easier to play. But having seen it and seen that it's these really fast runs with this constant back and forth between a light tap and, you know, accented hits... Uh, you know, it just blows my mind that he can do that. And then, God, like a minute long double bass kicks there at the end. I don't know. That is a phenomenal performance, though. All Everything this week was phenomenal. I mean, seriously, you guys know how to pick your stuff. You really do. I know there's a lot of drummers that I didn't get to this week. Uh, you know, there were five more in the poll that didn't make the cut. And since Monday, I've seen a ton of comments of people, you know, requesting drum cam vids from all these different people. And, yeah, we're going to have to do another drum cam week soon. I mean, not not like soon, soon. We <laughs> There's so many themes that we need to touch on. And, of course, there's so many bands I need to revisit. But, yeah, I would like to do another drum cam week before, I mean, even before the end of the year. I don't know. The sooner the better, but also I don't want to get people too bored of it. I don't know. Maybe some people have saw five drummers and they're like, yep, that's enough for me. I'll check out. Hope we never see that one again. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how people feel, but I want to get back to this because I'm really excited. I, I love this week. It was a joy. And like I said at the beginning, I don't really know much about drumming. I've learned a lot about terminology just this week. And uh, so that's really cool. And it's really encouraged me to kind of branch out and read a little bit into drumming so I can appreciate this stuff better. I can I have a very base level understanding. I understand what's going on and I can appreciate some of the more fan, fantastical stuff because I kind of know what's going on with them. But I'm sure there's a lot of nuance that I'm missing that a real drummer would just be blown away even more than me because they they can see the subtle things that are happening. So yeah, I, I like this, working outside of my wheelhouse. I'm a little nervous going into it, like I said at the beginning. It's it's a little nerve-wracking to sit here and try to analyze and tell you guys what I'm thinking about for things I don't know how to analyze. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a little, little nerve-wracking. But, you know, I came out the end of the week better for it, learning some stuff. You guys, like I said, you guys have taught me a lot, so... Yeah, I would like to do more of this. And it actually encouraged me to try to get some themes going in more things that I'm not well versed in. Um, you know, we talked about Billie Eilish a couple of uh, weeks ago when we did non-rock and metal. And I said some stuff in there that, for the most part, I still stand by. But there was a lot of comments uh, about how I had the wrong misconceptions and I was bringing in some biases to it. Even though I feel like I was still fairly uh, positive about both of the tracks we listened to, uh, you know, there's still a lot of things that I can learn about pop music and pop, uh, you know, how it's created and engineered and stuff like that. And I like pop music. I do. Not, not as much as I like other genres. It still has to 
it still has to kind of fit a mold that I enjoy. Um, but you know, it it's stuff like this drum week really tells me, you know, there's a lot more for me to learn. And uh, so maybe we can do a pop week in the future and hopefully some, uh, you know, people who already subscribe to me, already watch my stuff, maybe they love pop and they can kind of help me out with some terminology and, and some knowledge there. And maybe we can get some eyes on the channel from, you know, outside people who have never checked me out who are very into pop can kind of help me out as well. So, yeah, I'm going to throw that up in one of the next uh, polls and see if we can't get a pop week going. I'm, I don't know how many people are going to be interested in that as far as my usual viewers and stuff. Um, but that interests me just because I don't know about it. And after having gone through drum week and kind of the nerves that went into this and coming out of it just fine, you know, I'd like to explore other genres or instruments or, or regions or anything like that that I don't know much about kind of have uh, a little bit of a learning experience while kind of showing you guys what I'm hearing from my perspective and you guys can you know let me know about the perspectives I don't have so yeah a little bit of like uh I don't know co-op learning sounds fun all right I've I've kind of run this late <laughs> this whole ending's just kind of gone on wild rambly stuff that I normally do I don't know why I can't not ramble 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 all right so that ends up this week. I got a Patreon picks or two, actually special selection, or two coming out tomorrow. Uh, some of the, uh, you know, premium list special selection. That list has started to fill up a little bit, so I got to get on that. And, uh, you know, I still want to get on the regular list and get that cleared out because there's still, there's still quite a few people on that one. Over, mm, over like 60, I think. So we got to get through that one. And then, uh, yeah, the premium stuff needs to get done too. So I'm going to try, I think I'm going to get two out tomorrow. And Sunday I'll be off as usual, take a little break. And Monday we'll be back with next week's theme. So, yep, good times, good times. And next week's theme is Brian Recommends. So we're not going to be doing so much analysis or reaction stuff. I'm going to be showing you guys what I enjoy and what I, for the most part, haven't seen requested much. Um, maybe it's just because the bands aren't that popular. Maybe it's because you think I already know about them. I don't know. Um, not a lot of it's going to be metal, though. I I don't really listen to a lot of metal, <laughs> which is why this channel has been so fun. But, uh, you know, there's some really good stuff I want to introduce you guys to. And this will be a week to show you guys five of the things that I'm interested in that I don't think... I mean, some of it's going to be under the radar. Some of it might not be, but yeah, it's going to be a fun week. So stay tuned for that. I'm excited. Uh, like I said, tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. Otherwise, same time for Monday for your regularly scheduled themed content. And... Yeah, like, subscribe, ring the bell, stuff in the description, links to Patreon, Twitter, PayPal, uh, you know, the the spreadsheet if you want to add some reactions, blocked video list if you want to check out if you've missed anything because of uh, YouTube. And yeah, you guys stay safe out there. Have a fantastic weekend if you ain't coming by tomorrow to check that out. Uh, if you are coming by tomorrow, awesome. Can't wait to see you. All right, you guys stay safe out there. and See you next time.